Alright guys, I thought I'd do a little bit of a video update. I'll keep my screen on, giving us a nice little purple reflection. We're reading this one this weekend, um, which is sort of more around the digital nomad, but I would actually say it's got an emphasis on working for yourself, because uh, obviously the digital nomad you often would be working for clients or whatever, um, maybe self-employed, but you may still have a decent employer that gives you a bit of flexibility to work away. Um, but I was looking at it from two perspectives, because for me, I recognised a long time ago the flaws in um, the way society um, works in the sense of we like people in the office. Well, that, the digital world has moved on beyond that, but there's an obsession of being available even though you don't need to be available. Technology is beyond often people's comprehension um, of what the capabilities are. Hence, I think the COVID situation has actually made it much, much easier for people to sort of say to companies, look, full lockdown when it suited you, when you know, you've been forced down and the business has been empty, everything still function, people work from home. Um, on top of that, you save a fortune on rent and leases, because obviously if you can get rid of the buildings long term, you've got massive cost savings there. But I thought I'd do um, a bit of, bit of a talk on it, um, because when I look at traditional working, and it does, I mean, these things still work, but it is flawed. I mean, you traditional working... You work on five-year plans often because even business plans are often on a five-year. Um, to evolve in a business and move up the food chain, it often revolves around mimicking people, seeing what works for them and using it to your advantage to do exactly the same. Um, that's, that's another thing on traditional uh, progression. You train for work you you will say for example want to be an architect so you train in it and then once you're qualified often that's where you stop because you reach what you want to do and this, these these are very traditional things um and then you start to keep within the work model or the business model so you'll develop like it's like say become an architect and everything you do revolves around that yet there is more opportunities out there and obviously, with the traditional model, you're locked into the business because you're, let's sell, it, let's sell it as it is, you are focused on helping the business. The business is not focused on you, you are focused on it. And that's the business, you know, that, that's what I call a traditional, um, tr traditional way of thinking about if you're wanting to do some personal development, want to progress in the business, that's the way to do it. And I've done it. You know, I've progressed quite well um, using very obvious stuff um, to progress my own career. Now, the the play version is the opposite. So, pause it there for a sec, by the way. Um, so, the play model, because um, using work and play, they're a bit odd, you know, as words. Because work itself, um, basically, you've carried out a task that something somebody wanted, and it's you've re been rewarded. So that sort of work and plays more play, and often doesn't involve reward. Um, but combining the two, you get something that's um, a bit more interesting. But anyway, so the play model is more around live for today. The goals and achievements are more focused on doing things um, that have a more short-term impact. Um, they see that the goalposts constantly change. The rise of the market changes uh, through automation, globalization, everything are upon us. Um, so as such, five-year plans type thinking often isn't relevant. Now, we'll get to my thoughts on this later on, but that's that's one of the key things. It's sort of more live for today. Um, 
evolution is another thing evolving where you're needing seeing where the the gaps are in whatever it is you're doing you know seeing uh, opportunities so it's a constant evolution thing uh, working with something you enjoy is a big part of it you know it's whether you know it's giving you the capability to do something you're doing or um, it's a means to an end for that but the ultimate goal is actually doing something you enjoy so for example you may like surfing but you then teach in surfing because you may not like teaching surfing but you're in the location that gives you the surfing opportunities you've got an income coming off it it's it's something you can evolve in something you're passionate about that's where the play bit comes into it um, but it is more for focus on the short term um, but I have to say it's the more enjoyable way of being um, and if you can evolve things to something you have a passion about it does have a strong output you know it's more progressive it's better you, you're enjoying it <laughs> if you're enjoying something you're going to have a better output you know when you finish work um, in most jobs a lot of people like finished gone home where if you've got something you're actually passionate about um, you're 24 7 you're always thinking about it because it's exciting it's enjoyable you like doing it now my version of why I think like I said it may not suit everybody but my version is the two sort of mixed together so for example Goals fixed for on specifics, but may not need to be uh, may not need to be long term, because one of the things I will say is like the house in Spain. That's a goal. That's a goal that's um, significant. And you know, buying more properties in Spain is a long term five year goal for me. Um, but it's sort of bite size. We've got the first house. We will move on to the next one. But if another opportunity comes along, I pause that and I'll I'll go and do something else first. Um, for example, we're in the middle of sorting out a water uh, filtration station in the Philippines. Um, we've started a Wi-Fi company in the Philippines. So so the point being is, you take the opportunities, but you may still have these goals because not all goals disappear. And I think this is one of the key things. You've got to do what works for you. My ultimate thing is to be in Spain full time. Um, so that's my that's my main objective in all this. Um, having multiple properties there gives me something that is long term for the family. It's a um, solid solid business plan in the sense of even COVID times the place was really busy. Business wise, it will function. So for me, that works. Um, Training is another bit for me. Training is continuous, but not only for the obvious. Now, one of the things I've learned over the years is that although, for example, I was focused on the surveying stuff, an opportunity come up to do um, the call center on sales and marketing for solar panels, merchant processing, car insurance, um, and then into marketing, email marketing, other things, and uh, what else did we have in the transcription services, blah, blah, blah. It's like important to see that where you are here, you might, like I said, I focus on surveying, pays well, etc. But ultimately, expand out to these other bits, made a lot more money. Um, but a lot of this is you've got to understand how the markets work. You've got to understand um, how you can put the business together. You've got to see that not everything is in the box. Not everything is in your current remit. You may um, have opportunities that you haven't even looked at. So I do think it's very important to continuously train. Um, I mean, it's like at the moment I'm looking at apps and stuff and I'm like, I could pay somebody to develop it, but what if they rip the apps off or whatever? And I'm sitting there thinking, I, I might actually learn to do it myself because it then gives me the opportunity to expand out with other ideas. Because um, I've got about five or six app ideas I've got at the moment. Um, and saying sort of goes that... You, you don't have to get it, you know, you can, may have 200 ideas, but you have to get it right once. And to be fair, over 
I the start of this journey, what, 2007, I've done pretty well. You know, we've we, we done pretty well the whole period. You know, you have your ups and downs, but we, we've done okay. At no point can I complain about anything. I mean, even um, dropping into the crypto markets, did that with Jay. Um, come good with numbers. You know, I used my skills from the survey and build modeling and looked at it in market trading. Did around that right out of it. Jay's now traveling again. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. With the training, I'd say always keep yourself open. That's why I'm always reading books, looking what other people are doing, trying to understand. Because a lot of it is the networking and uh, understanding what other people are doing. Because you may have something they haven't thought of. You may have an opportunity for them. They may have an opportunity for you. But training is definitely part of keeping yourself up to date um, and just being open to opportunities. Another key, key one is adapt for the better. Now, I've focused on this a bit more lately because it's basically, if it doesn't work, change it. Um, so, for example, you may start a meal delivery business, but if it's not making a lot of money and you can't think of another way of doing it or a restaurant, for example, you know, a lot of the time, the money's in franchising, it's having multiple of the same thing. Um, for me, if it's not working, change it. You know, either you change the business model or change the business. Because you can get locked in some, to something that just keeps paying your bills. But do you want more than that? Do you want to be doing something you actually want to do? You know, you may start off and, you know, for example, somebody wants to be a fashion designer. So they start designing boutique style stuff, hard to sell. So they then start dropping into um, school uniforms or something they weren't really into um, because it pays the bills. At that point, you've got to reassess. What are you doing it for? <laughs> you know, that wasn't why you went into that journey. So if it doesn't work, change it. It's as simple as that. Uh, work should, should be enjoyable. At least recognize short-term sacrifices as acceptable. Um, Long-term is traditional. Now, the reason I say that, what? so your, your goal is that your work, what you're doing, should be enjoyable. And if you are making sacrifices for the short-term, recognize they should be for the short-term. If you're dropping into back to like a traditional role and it's becoming more and more back to where you were, then you're failing on what you, your journey was. You're going back to where you were. Recognize that because you need to understand how to break free of that before you can lock yourself back into the day to day, um, which is very easy to do because, you know, like if you look at where I am now, I've got a house, finishing the renovations, I'm locked in to finish the renovations, uh, got got partial mortgage on it, I've got this place rented here, um, I've got a car in Spain, looking at a car in the UK um, to give me more flexibility um, for mobility and other stuff I want to look at. So you start looking at, hang on, the expenses are expanding, which means your work commitment becomes more and more um, because you're locking yourself in. Recognize it and think about it. The, the decisions that you're doing, are, are you locking yourself in? Is there another way of doing it? You know, for example, I have a new BMW here. Yeah, I'm paying a horrendous amount of 300 a month in tax on it. But ultimately, I could walk away and that car's not mine. You know, it stops tomorrow. The cost. Buy a car. I've got to keep it running, got to keep it functional, got to keep it parked here. So I moved to Spain and left this place, still got to find a location for it. There's a lot to weigh up when you're doing this stuff, but the, my view is the old um, corporate style of things that are very um, common. Um, you'll see a lot of them from business people that will do um, uh, webinars and talk about how to progress in your career and stuff. Take bits from that. Don't take all of it. Take bits from that and then take the bits from um, 
more of a digital nomad life and take a bit from the work piece. The reason, uh, sorry, the play piece, the play piece is sort of between the two because you will get digital nomads that have found that balance. But you can be in that area without actually being a digital nomad um, because there's many businesses that function doing something you love. Um, but what I would say is take bits from everything and assess how you want to do it. I think that's the key to it. Well, that's my update for today. Um, give me your thoughts below. Thank you.